We are secure in His hands because God includes future to His plan. God includes future to His plan. When we talk about future, we're not saying that I was tempted actually when I made that point. I can point that God has a future or God has a future plan for us. But that's not what I'm trying to emphasize or the verse is trying to emphasize. God includes future in His plan because the understanding of this passage is more of knowing the plan of God during those times, especially even our time nowadays. Do you have any long-term goal as far as your plans? Like, when you go to vacation, you just think of, like, maybe let's go next, next month. Let's go to, to Alberta. Or you have a long plan. Do you have a five-year plan? 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. I think next year we will, <laughs> or two years from now, or three years from now. When we think about this, we sometimes... Yeah, tempted to come up with our own thing. And our plans for sure are limited. Limited in a sense we're in based on the things that we can predict probably because uh, jobs are stable, career is still good. But when it comes to the overall plan or more than five years or ten years, I've shared what to one of our leaders, or one of our leaders shared to me something. Uh, Pastor, after two years, after three years, after four years, after five years. So he said, that's just my plan, Pastor. But at the end of the day, I'll just let God show me his wonderful plan. And that's good as well. But when we talk about God's future, we are simply saying that God's plan for us includes our future. Okay, when you say we have a future, that's different when you put it in a language or terminology as future plan. This future has something to do with our entire life here on earth and after death. That's part of God's future and plan to each and every one of us. Here comes the word. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to those I carried you in the exile of Jerusalem, in Jerusalem to Babylon. Build house. This is God's plan. Okay? Meaning, they were there for 70 years and they thought, oh, it's going to be a long years. But God planned there that moment for them to be captured by, by Babylon so that they may be able to see God in the midst of their suffering, in the midst of their uh, hard head, result of their hard-headed uh, decisions, built houses and settled down. They couldn't believe that God was establishing their, the God's plan to them while they're in Babylon. What God is saying again, especially to, during those times, through Jeremiah, was that I can still manifest and move even you were there. And sure enough, God showed that He was faithful to the Israelites, that He will fulfill what He promised to them. So that's why that plan is specifically is just for 70 years. No, it was not. It wasn't. Look at the statement in verse 6. Mary and have sons and daughters. Because for some leaders, probably the, the kings who were there during the, the 70 years period, they were doubting about, so that's why the kings, uh, kings during the time of Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, and Isaiah, they were doubting the message of the prophet when they delivered and prophesied about the 70 years and after 70 years, they will go back to Jerusalem. The kings were again hard-headed to listen to the prophets because they were focused that God's plan only is limited or focused on Jerusalem's fulfillment but not on Assyria and Babylon. But let me tell you this, as part of the history of Israel, Assyria and Babylon were part of God's promise and plan to this generation, to, to the generation of Israelites during those times. Look at the word, increase in number. You can still maximize. Verse 7, as seek peace and prosperity in the city, 
to which I have carried you into exile. They were there because of their uh, uh, hard-headed heart and decision. They disobeyed God. But look at that statement. I have carried you into exile. Meaning, though this human fault and human weaknesses, so that's why they were there, it was God who planned them to be there. So meaning, when it comes to the plan of God, it's not just their situation because of the result of their decisions, but that's part of God's plan. And that's not only limited to that scenario during those, those times, but God has a wonderful future in that particular thing. Look at verse 10. When 70 years, and then go back to verse, 20, verse 11 of our main verse, for I know the plans I have for you. This is New International Version. But when you read other versions and translations, it, it originally points out to the Hebrew language as thoughts. For I know the thoughts I have for you. For I know the thoughts, meaning my thoughts I have for you. And that thought, that thought declares the Lord, plots to prosper you and not to harm you. What are you kidding? We're here. The Babylonians were, were powerful enough and they were strict about this. We were suffering here and then you have planned for us to prosper because that's what God said. Prosper. I mean, enjoy the city. But they could not really comprehend and embrace the plan of God. Plans to prosper you. Again, plans to prosper you. Again, plans not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. You know what? Specifically, God, through Jeremiah, used this so that it be able to receive by the Israelites. And the Israelites then, same as in our generation, we are limited of comprehending the plan of God. When we understand the plan of God, we are just focused on the things that we are doing right now. But when we embrace the totality of the plan of God, remember that it includes future. Meaning, it does not mean that when God says the only beneficiary is our family. Yeah, probably yes, but let's be reminded that when God says something, it has future implication. Or eternal significance. That's the thing that I've been using this. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope. Hallelujah. Wow. God has a future and a hope for His people even when they suffer in the exile, even when they hurt and they deserve, deserve discipline or judgment. And it's the devil deception to rob God's people of their sense of future and a hope for them. So that's why God's thoughts, God's plan was to just give their minds and thoughts of the things of God. So that's why in verse, um, in the passage of Isaiah as well, same as Jeremiah, uh, Isaiah prophesied in Babylon as well, as well as Assyria, the ten tribes and the, the two nations of uh, Judah and Jerusalem, I mean, yeah, area. He said this, Seek the Lord while he, was, he may be found. Call him while he is near. And the statement in verse 7 says, Let the wicked forsake their ways and the righteous and righteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and you to, to our God for he will freely pardon. I love this wonderful passage. For my thoughts, for my plans, are not your plans, not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than. The understanding here is that when God says something with regards to our plans or His plans to us, remember that plan is not just for our present situation. It includes our future so that's why when we understand the future plan of our God to each and every one of us, let us be encouraged and be reminded of the fact that, wow, hallelujah. He did not just give us a promise to 
to embrace, but an understanding of the God that we serve is always willing and have that kind of thoughts for our future. It includes your kids, your grandkids, and grand-grandkids. Hallelujah. Because that is God's promise to each and every one of us. Brothers and sisters, we are surrounded, bombarded with these uncertainties, with this future-gazing analysis and speculations, uncertainties in life that would probably um, will lead us to some sort of thinking. I think I need to plan in advance to anticipate what will happen to our economy, um, insurance, or anything. That's good as well. I'm not saying those are bad. Those planning ahead are part of our thing here on earth. But when you do that, you always think that the God that we serve, even though we have these uncertainties, is He is faithful. He is faithful to His promise. And He will remain faithful. So that's why when we talk about these things, we understand that also that God includes future to His wonderful plan to each and every one of us. So the idea of the highlighted statement there, we are secure in His hands because of His, hallelujah, faithfulness and because of the future that He included to His plan to each and every one of us. To your family, to your loved ones, to your cousins, to your immediate family, to your neighbors, to your career, even to our health, to every one of us. So our response is that, I mean, again, in, in the certainty of this world, we are certain that He holds our future. No need to be worried about, no need to be busy of the things of this world so that we will be prepared when these things happen. I think one thing that we should be doing is not just prioritizing our own personal thing or our goals, but more of including our spiritual goals for us to be close, closer to God more than anything else, especially this coming year. Because brothers and sisters, God always desires our best even when we may deserve the worst. When we evaluate our life, we failed God. We had some limitations as well. We have some regrets. But God still is faithful. God still includes future when it comes to His plan. So that's why, brothers and sisters, this morning before communion, it's always good to really thank God because of all these things that He promised to us that we can say that we are secure in His hands. Hallelujah. And we all know, we've been sharing this, that the safest place on earth is in the presence of God. As long as we are in God, as long as we are living just, as long as we are responding to the things that God wants us to do, this is not just, yes, Lord, thank you for your promise that I can live. I'm thankful. This is not just, yes, Lord, I am blessed. I am the sons of God. I am daughters of God. I am, I am this. I am, a child, I am a child of God. I am favored by God. I think what God is expecting us is to respond properly. You can do something that will benefit and, yes, share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with others. This is not just claiming it as promised to us. And I believe that we can share this truth to other people, to our neighbors, to our friends, to our Facebook friends, and even to our loved ones, to our unbelieving spouse, our kids who, are, who have gone from this world. Hallelujah. But we can still do what God requires us to do, that we are secure in our part, but others are not. We can share this thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's bow our heads momentarily and appreciate what God is doing. Lord, in the midst of uncertainties, in the midst of this world full of chaos and things that are un unpredictable, we sometimes falter, we sometimes came up with our own thing. 
and not to go to you in prayer and ask you for wisdom. We deserve the worst. But thank God because when we open the scripture, when we open your word, you always desire our best even when we may deserve the worst because of our failings. But thank you, Lord, because this day you are allowing us to see ourselves in the perspective of your word, your principle, the word of God. So we can say that in the midst of these uncertainties, not so sure, but we can still cling on to the truth that you shared in our midst from the authority of the scripture that we are secure in your hand. And our future, Lord, hallelujah, you hold it. That's why, Lord, we are thankful. Thank you that you are faithful to your promise. Thank you that you include future in your plan. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus night now, Lord, we will just respond accordingly as we receive your word. Thank you, hallelujah. Whatever it is that we will be doing in response to this, whether it is um, in, it includes our family members, it includes our own personal plan or goal or thing or thoughts. Thank you, God, because you will surround us with this promise and with this principle so that when we come out of this place and face the world with a lot of uncertainties, we will not be bothered by those, Lord, but we will be standing firm the truth that we have received and you have promised. Bless every decision that we will be doing, Lord, in response to this. And may not the, uh, may the Holy Spirit be the encouraging and always reminding us, Lord, of the truth that we have received from your word. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We appreciate what you're doing in our lives. And we can see, simply say that we are indeed secure because you hold our future. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, this is our thanksgiving. Amen, amen, amen.